let a you know pioneer the effort to bring him on board and through text messages kind of just count those crazy days I guess back in early January late December where that whole process kind of came together. Yeah, you know, I mean, I know Charlie and I really wanted to. Uh, we talked to a lot of guys on the team about you know what the possibilities were, what could happen now, because we were a little bit scared, a little nervous. Um, and we knew that Coach Schaefer was a, a great guy. And so, you know, we just we just sent a text message. Charlie's the one who sent it to him, and uh, I was just the person he called uh, to Coach, or to Daryl Gross, and just saying, you know, um, if, if it means anything, we'd love to have Coach Schaefer as our coach. But, you know, it's not like anything we said, like we demand or anything like that. Um, you know, we just kind of put our input in, and uh, we were just lucky enough that uh, Dr. Gross agreed with us. At the time, it was still kind of up in the air whether Daniel Hackett would go with Doug and how many of the former staffers would go over to Buffalo. Why Shafe? Well, I think I think Shafe is just the, the kind of guy that you'd want as a head coach of a team, you know. I mean, uh, you look at him and you see how he acts, and he just seems like a head coach. You know, he's a real good D coordinator. He knows what he's doing, and, and uh, you know, he seems to, at least in my opinion, like I said, I know nothing about coaching, um, but he, he really has a, has a good connection with all the players, um, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, last year, he had a real strong connection with the guys on the team, and uh, I think that's kind of grown to everyone on the team now since, since he's our head coach, and guys love him and play, play their butts off for him. You heard him up here telling us about him through a checker for his sister. Um, do you see any of your grandfather in um, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know that side of my grandfather too well other than on the golf course. Um, but, you know, my grandfather is a competitor, and, and Coach Schaefer is. But I think any football coach you find is going to be a competitor. A guy who, who hates to lose, who is going to do everything he can to win. Um, so, I, you know, I, I'm sure I, I do see some parts of him in there, but, you know, like I said, it's, it's still different people. And uh, uh, since my grandfather has been out coaching my whole life, it, it's kind of a different side of it. Uh, I know you had said that you, you thought the season overall was a success, and you said the BC game was one that stood out, but are there other, a couple other highlights that kind of, when you think back on this season, are the biggest ones? Um, I think some, some big highlights from the season would probably be, uh, you know, going down to a place like Maryland and getting a, a win, a place like NC State, um, really just trying to show this conference that we are for real and that we can play in the ACC. I think those are those are some memories that will always stick with me forever. Mm -hmm. For you and Sean, you inherited kind of uh, some young guys in the line and you brought yeah. them along this year. Knowing what you did about them at the, the start of the year, the start of training camp, how happy are you with kind of the progress of the line kind of, you know, as that leader? Outstanding. I think, I think guys like Nick and Ivan have played well and they work real well together on the right side and you got guys like Rob and Sean who you know they you know what you're gonna get out of them every game um, they're, they're class A guys and you know just playing with guys like that you can't go wrong when is it or, or has it kind of hit you that that tomorrow's the last game not yet but I'm sure it will before the game but those are emotions I'm gonna have to learn to control and harness before I end up uh, going out there and playing because I don't want to be a too much uh, emotionally unstable before you on the field. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about what the process is for you afterward, where you might train and stuff like that? Um, I'll be in Syracuse uh, with my family and and enjoying time with them and uh, training there and just doing what I what I know how to do. Sticking with Coach Hicks? Oh yeah, absolutely. He's the best. Mm -hmm. um, looking at, at tomorrow and kind of how the two teams are a little similar, both rely on the run, both like to stop the run. Do you think that, that suits the team well and Minnesota's a good matchup for you guys in that regard? Well, I think you look at a team like Minnesota and, and they're uh, very close to us. You know, they're very good defense. Um, their offense is very good at running the ball. They have a thousand yard rusher at running back. Um, you know, we don't have a thousand yard rusher this year, but we do have a couple running backs who have gotten over a good amount of yards. And I think we rushed for over 2,000 yards on the year. So, you know, it's two very similar teams. I think it's going to be a good game to see, you know, whose defense can stop the run, who's going to make the big plays when it counts, and, and who can play a better game of football. Is there kind of that feel that, you know, that anything you can do, I can do better kind of thing, or that, that here we are trying to do the same thing, and who's going to do it better? It seems very shavery to me, you know? Yeah. It, just, it just seems yeah. right up his alley. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, it's going to be a slugfest. You know, it's going to be a physical slugfest, and basically it's who can take one more punch. And so that's, I think that's what the game's going to come down to tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.